In the wake of the Black Lives Matters protests back in 2020, Tate Britain felt compelled to shutter its restaurant, which has on its walls a mural painted by Rex Whistler in the 1920s. The mural had been denounced as racist for its depictions of black people. Rather than remove it, which is in any case impossible under conservation laws, the Tate has now installed a piece of video art to add context to Whistler's artwork. Museums are facing unprecedented pressure to manage how they present artworks from different eras, which contain images that some people find offensive. To discuss whether the Tate's middle path could be a way forward, I'm joined by the art academic and curator David Boyd Hancock. David, welcome to GB News. Good um, morning. You are a specialist in uh, 20th century art. That's correct. So tell us a little bit about the Whistler mural in the Tate. Uh, a little bit about the context. What is the subject matter? The subject matter is a, a sort of a hunt. I mean, Whistler was a very young man when he painted. He'd been, he was at the Slade School of Art here in London, and uh, he'd been commissioned to decorate the whole walls of this uh, restaurant, a beautiful restaurant. And um, so the theme is a, a hunt for uh, delectables, food. These, these people are going on a, on a sort of hunt around, almost around the, sort of the world. They go to uh, Africa, to China, and uh, they're on this sort of big adventure with a, with a story to it and um, discovering all sorts of curiosities and foods along the way. So how, how could they come into this? How could they intrude into this? This image, for example, of a, of a young black boy um, with a chain around his neck being, being towed behind a, a carriage, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a curious interlude episode in the, uh, in the narrative. I mean, it's a very tiny... There's two little uh, uh, black characters, maybe three, and then there's a couple of Chinese characters as well. They go to uh, Cathay, China and the Great Wall... Um, so I don't know. It's, it, it has been interpreted as sort of a, sort of a jokey part in this this fantasy story, which is very um, exotic. It's about Whistler sort of representing a, 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 this sort of story, um, and it, it seems very anomalous in it. I mean, it's a very small part of the uh, of the whole mural, and it's been called in the, in the New York Times and places or this racist mural, but it's not at all. It's just these two little tiny elements, um, which largely went. Um, largely unnoticed for, for, for decades. Well, I used to go to the, um, the Tate Gallery, as it was called in those days, Tate Gallery restaurant a great deal. It, it, it was a very remarkable restaurant. I mean, it wasn't mm. sort of the restaurant of the gallery. It was an institution, a yes. destination in itself. It attracted a lot of uh, politicians, a lot of journalists. It had a fabulous um, wine list. But, of course, one of the joys of uh, lunching or dining there was the mural. But I must say, none of us, as far as I know, ever studied it in detail or spotted this? No, I mean, I only ever dined in there once. I, I was commissioned to write a book for the Tate, and they very kindly took me for, for lunch there. I hadn't been able to afford it before. It seemed very, yes, very... Um, uh, it's very beautiful and, and very expensive. Um, but, yes, yeah, certainly, you know, sort of sitting down, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have noticed it, unless, unless you actually sat right next to it, in one of the tables sort of next to it, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have noticed. And apparently it had been brought to attention um, prior to uh, uh, Black Lives Matters, movement. Um, and all, all the way back in the 1970s, it appears that uh, at least somebody um, had complained about it. What do you think of the up-to-date response? What do you think of the idea of this video installation alongside it? Well, I haven't seen the installation yet, but I've read some interesting interviews with the artist Keith Piper, and he seems to have done a wonderful job with it. I think it's a very interesting response that they've done. He's clearly delved into the whole history of... Um, what Whistler was trying to do with the um, with the murals, um, his his work, and it's a very sensitive, thoughtful response. And what they've done is they've created they have it's a it's a conversation between uh, what Piper calls sort of maybe the ghost of Whistler, an actor playing his part, and a, a, a university professor sort of interviewing him. And this was twenty twenty two minute piece and a, a dialogue between them discussing Whistler's work, but then aspects equally of, of this uh, detail in his painting. And as I understand it, uh, the professor talks and asks Whistler about it. And uh, Piper, very rightly, hasn't put words into Whistler's mouth. He's, he's used, he says so Whistler sort of hesitates when it comes to this part of the discussion and sort of tries to sort of pass, uh, pass over it. Mm. But that's all that's in there. So the... It's moved from being a restaurant to being uh, an art piece. 
Yes. I mean, it's, the, it's, as you say, it's the entirety of the world. I mean, ab- ab- apart from anything else, I imagine this has been quite damaging to the Tate's finances because I assume it was quite a substantial income generator. Now, do you think this is the way forward in general? I mean, there must be lots of works of art that somebody's going to find offensive, but maybe even a reasonable person would find offensive. Are we going to have to create a counter piece of art in every case, do you think? Well, it's unusual the Whistler restaurant because it's on the walls there, so there was no way of, of removing it. I mean, some critics were saying it ought to be destroyed, uh, which is a sort of appalling idea for that. But a lot of work is taken off the walls and then just ends up in the, uh, in the stores. So Stanley Spencer, an artist I write a lot about, he did a very beautiful, huge painting, the crucifixion, the resurrection at Cookham, at the same time, oh, yeah. virtually, at Whist- at Whist- of Whistler. And that has uh, these black figures who are being resurrected at the same time in the little Berkshire village of, of Cookham. And a fence was taken, uh, uh, that representation there, for example. So that's a very big work that is currently not on show and is not likely to be... Seen again, that tends to be the easier way of doing things. But then there is awful, equally an awful lot of interpretation. So a uh, museum where I live in Oxford, the uh, Pitt Rivers Museum, that's got into uh, quite a debate about where its collection is, uh, has come from and trying to interpret that in a new sort of, uh, a new sort of fashion. Um, but I think in, uh, commissioning artworks is a, a very interesting way of, of doing that. And I think do, Piper has responded very uh, cleverly to, to what they've asked him to do. do. Do you share the view that some people have that um, it seems now that uh, teams at some of our great collections um, are, not, are, are not keen to defend the body of work mm. that, that, that they manage, that they're kind of almost leading the opposition to it? Yes, yeah, there is definitely a feel of that. And I think that's un- unfortunate. And that's becoming more commonplace. Um, and I think it's driven by younger curators, younger academics coming through with a different sort of agenda to what existed um, before and do feel a certain amount of reason to, yeah, almost to attack the works and <laughs> their collection. Um, and even find defence where, where there isn't defence in- intended. So the, uh, the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, for example, is sort of causing controversy a bit at the moment with its own reinterpretation of its collections and looking at landscapes, I mean, constable landscapes, and bringing in sort of issues of politics and, and race and national identity into what really seems like a sort of an innocent uh, painting of, uh, of the English countryside. David, thank you very much. David uh, Boyd-Hancock.